Hey guys, it's Holly. So I'm pretty sure a lot of us would be really familiar with the phrase army building. I mean, it's a huge thing in Lego Star Wars. I myself have gotten really into it and really enjoy it, but I feel like no one really talks about how you can also do it pretty easily for Lego Harry Potter. I mean, I constantly sort of like liked buying student packs and different like house torsos and making a ton of different students and really just bringing some life into like my Hogwarts displays. So much so that when I was starting up my channel memberships, one of the perks that I offer is you can actually like make your own little sig fig for me to like build out of physical parts and I'll chuck it into my cabinet. I actually am a bit behind and need to make some of them. But one thing that I have completed is my entire Quidditch teams that I've got. So with the release of Diagon Alley, we finally got the remaining two houses we were waiting for in terms of like Quidditch torsos, which was Hufflepuff and Ravenclaw. And luckily recently Lego released this book called Let's Play Quidditch, which came along with a little Cedric Diggory minifigure. So I ended up buying six of these books and thankfully someone was very kind enough to send me one so I've created an entire Hufflepuff team too. A bunch of them are just custom figures some of which are based off name characters i.e. the entire Gryffindor team and then some people are just random characters that I've made in order to fulfill my sort of squad so I wanted to show you all of them today. So first up we have the Gryffindor team and these are the only ones that at least I know every single character of and that is purely down to this one PlayStation game on the PlayStation 2 like years ago. So I sort of use that as the basis and really this centers around Harry in his first two years and sort of the range and age of every character at that point. It was just easiest to do Quidditch wise. I mean you got Harry sort of with his short legs in the set, same with Oliver Wood and then I could just go and buy a bunch of other Oliver Woods and and then just get some white legs for the Weasley twins, but I'll show you all of them individually. So first up, of course, is the seeker of the Gryffindor team, Harry Potter himself. And this minifigure is exactly the same as the one from the Quidditch pitch set. There's nothing special about him. I do wish, though, he had a shorter cape from that set. Unfortunately, they just gave him the same full length one. I've also still got him holding the snitch just because I think it looks great. But there is Harry. Next up is the keeper for the team, Oliver Wood, and same deal, he is the exact version from the set. There's nothing too special about him. Personally, I don't think the face matches all too well. I mean, it works, but I might try and find a version and swap it out. But the amount of figures that I have of this guy now, just in order to be able to create a full team is insane. Next up is our first beater for the team, and that is Fred Weasley. And since this sort of is the version based off the first two films, just judging by Harry's legs, I went with mid legs for both the Weasley twins. I just ended up opening up two of the CMF figures to make Fred and George. That way I could get multiples of their heads. It was pretty easy and pretty cheap to do, not to mention the fact that their hair piece is extremely common. And then the white legs I just ordered off bricks and pieces as they featured on Eleven in the Stranger Things set. It was by far the cheapest way to get a hold of them. Them. Then of course with Fred you have to have George and I've actually given him the beater stick from the 2010 Lego Harry Potter Quidditch pitch set. I hope to get some more of them so that I've got two beater sticks for every team member. And then I did something that I saw on Instagram, I can't even remember who posted it, but it was to stick one of the superhero stands out the end and then put the old style quaffle balls, which are actually Technic balls on the end, so that it looks like he's beating it, which I thought was hilarious and I absolutely loved it. So I've done that and given it along to George. Then lastly are the three chasers, starting off with Katie Bell. Now Katie Bell, you'll see that she has long legs, but then was also still in the movies in The Half-Blood Prince. She's an interesting one. She's like featured at all sorts of ages. I mean, in the first two movies, she looked quite tall. So I did keep the tall legs, though I might swap them out to mid legs. I'm not entirely sure, but I've given her the 2010 Hermione Granger, also like the 2011 Padme face, and then just a regular sort of reddish brown ponytail to match sort of the reddish brown hair that I feel like she has in the movies. Next up is the newest edition, and this is Angelina Johnson. Now she's actually using the Monica Rambo head from the Marvel CMF, and then that same ponytail piece just in black this time around. I am really thankful for that Monica head right here. I think it's amazing, firstly, that we we're able to get more different skin tones and different face prints. Also, I think the facial expressions are perfect for Angelina Johnson, which makes me really, really excited. I'm lucky that I was able to get quite a few multiples of that character CMF, because I think this face looks perfect. Then the seventh and final member of the team is Alicia Spinett, and she's got the Iden Virtue something or rather, I can't remember her last name face, from the Battlefront sets for Lego Star Wars. And then I've given her that black cheerleading ponytail that came on that red cheerleader. I think it was like series seven or eight. Same deal again as well. She has got those long white legs and she is the last chaser and last member of my Harry Potter Quidditch team for Gryffindor. 
So next up, we're going to take a look at the Slytherin team. And similarly to Gryffindor, there are quite a lot of named characters in this. And I mean, that purely comes down to, you know, Draco being on the team, but as well as them giving us two named characters in the Quidditch match set, meaning that only four of them are completely custom. So let's go and have a look at the Slytherins. First up is our Seeker for Slytherin, and of course that is Draco Malfoy, and this is the version of the original Harry Potter CMF, and this is what I sort of mean by I wish Harry had a shorter cape. Draco's got one, and I think it looks a lot better on the figure. You can sort of see the legs. Hopefully one day there'll be a sort of dark red version that I can get to put on Harry, but for now I guess they'll just not match, but there's really nothing too special about this figure, but he did come along with a green broom, which is pretty cool, so I do usually use that. He also had a wand. So usually I just sort of keep that in his hand as well, but that is Draco. Next up is Lucian Bowl, and he is from just the regular Quidditch match set. Again, there's nothing too special about him. I mean, he's got a very generic face, very generic hair, but at least he is a named character, unlike, you know, most of this team. So it is quite nice to sort of know about him and have him. And again, I've got a lot of versions of him in order to make this team. Now from memory, Marcus Flint was either a beta or a chaser, but again, he is the last named character of the Slytherin team. I quite like this face. Honestly though, I do think that the one from the 2010 set was a lot more accurate. What I'm not a huge fan of though is this hair piece. I just feel like it's incredibly outdated. I wanna try and switch it up and mix it up with something else, but I've just left the figure as is for now, just the way he came in the Quidditch match set. Next up is generic player number one, and honestly, he kind of reminds me of Regulus Black. In order to make him, I gave him that older Draco Malfoy face as I had so many left over from the student pack, and then just gave him some of the dark brown sort of Snape, Pinch of Persia type of hair, which is why I think he ends up looking like Regulus Black. But honestly, I'll, I mean, I'll take it. Regulus Black definitely didn't play Quidditch in this year group, but he, he was a Quidditch player, so I will give him that. Next up is generic player number two, and honestly, she is an entire mood. I really like the figure that I made for this. Firstly, her hair, I actually am pretty sure I got from a Builder minifigure several years ago. I love the braided piece. I mean, if you're playing Quidditch, you're gonna wanna have your hair tied up, otherwise it's gonna get in your face. So I think it's really good for that. But also, I absolutely love this face print. It is double-sided and is Tina Goldstein's version from the Fantastic Beasts figure in the original Harry Potter CMF. I mean, the other side is incredibly happy, but I thought her grumpy face, you know, being a Slytherin player, being really angsty. I thought this one matched so, so much better. Our second last team member who I'm just going to name sort of the keeper for this, again, is pretty generic. I think this face is actually from the Lone Ranger sets. Like, this is quite old. Otherwise, I have no clue where it's from. And then I just gave him these short Harry Potter hair, again, because I had so many. But also, for some reason, like, Slytherin and sort of, like, darker hair colors really resonate with me. I just sort of put the two and two together and sort of that's what I think. So, again, that's sort of why I used that for him. In saying that whole spiel about hair colors though, I did use the <laughs> brighter hair color on this next figure using that sort of like nougat color, which I believe is from someone in Lego Star Wars. And then her face is again, one of those other spare characters from that Harry Potter student pack being Hannah Abbott. I don't quite think that the hair and eyebrows match all too well, but it did give me another figure in order to round out my Slytherin team. So that was a major win. And lastly is the Hufflepuff Quidditch team, which only has one official and named character, and that is Cedric Diggory right at the front. And these by far are the most expensive and difficult to try and create a team for. I mean, unless you were gonna try and do a Ravenclaw team, then that is even worse. I had to buy seven of the Quidditch Let's Play books in order to make up this entire team. So it was a bit frustrating, especially since I couldn't find these books for a very long time, but I finally completed my Hufflepuff collection. And let me tell you, I'm going to be very, very upset if they end up doing a Harry Potter Quidditch minifigure pack of sorts. It will be very frustrating. Kicking off our third and final team, of course, we have the Seeker of Hufflepuff, and that is Cedric Diggory, and he's technically the only official Hufflepuff player to ever exist. I mean, we got the empty uniforms in Diagon Alley, and then this version of the figure is from the Let's Play Quidditch book, which I had to get seven of those books in order to create the team. I mean, I could have ordered some off Bricklink, but I just found it easier and cheaper in some cases just to buy the entire book. So I had quite a lot of those spare that I had to donate and sort of throw away. But I'm glad I did because I love having the full team. 
The next player on my custom Hufflepuff team is this lady. And again, she does use the Monica Rambeau face from the Marvel CMF, so she looks exactly the same as my sort of custom Angelina Johnson, hence why I've sort of made her face the alternate version. I've also given her that like sort of shiri programmer hair piece, which has like the really nice braids and textured hair in a bun. Again, you don't want to have your hair flapping around while you're playing Quidditch. It's much better if it is tied up. Outside of the Weasleys and the Gryffindor team though, where we were missing some gingers, so I did create this next figure using that typical sort of Claire, Ginny, Weasley, overused gingery face, and that really nice sort of, again, orange version of the cheerleader ponytail. I think it looks really good, and I love the way this figure turned out. I also love the way the orange though complements the yellow in this uniform. I think it looks amazing personally. Next up, we have Lucien Ball's long lost twin, since they do share the same face, because I bought so many of those figures in order to make my Slytherin team. I just, I had to reuse one of them. And this figure, I did give that sort of dark brown version of the Han Solo hairpiece, which actually comes from a Disney princess set and was used on Flynn Rider. In order to sort of get this hairpiece, I did order them off bricks and pieces, so it was quite cheap to have them. And I think he looks great. Moving along to our next Quidditch player, and honestly, I feel like this guy needs some mid legs just because he does look a bit younger, sort of using that Will Byers face from the Stranger Things set. And then again, because I had so many Lucy and Balls, I did reuse the hair piece on this one here to make him. I quite like the expression that he sort of looks a bit more scared or sad, even though, you know, Hufflepuffs are typically supposed to be sort of quite happy. I think it's a really nice switch up. And again, I like how this guy turned out. Second to last, we have this lady, and I do want to swap out the hair eventually. I need to get some more sort of black tied up hair pieces because her hair is just going to get everywhere in her face if she attempts to try and play Quidditch. Like it's just, it's out, it looks luscious and gorgeous, but it is going to get everywhere. I think I might actually swap this out with sort of that half up, half down, but again, it would get in her face, but at least most of it would be tied up so it wouldn't quite get in her eyes. For the face, I'm using that, you know, regular sort of set Tina Goldstein, also Monica from Friends, and even Katie from Shang-Chi head. It's really easy and really common, and I had quite a few left over, which is why I decided to use it here. And lastly, the final Hufflepuff team member is this girl, who I imagine is probably just along the sort of lines of a chaser, and she's got sort of that face that was from the Stranger Things set off Will's mom. I cannot remember that character's name. Oh, Joyce. Joyce is behind. <laughs> Joyce Byers' face, that's who it is. And then the hair is the good old Series 1 CMF cheerleaders. While it doesn't quite match her eyebrows, I mean, there are blondes around the world that are like that. I mean, she probably is just doing some wizarding spell to make her hair nice and bleach blonde. And honestly, do not blame her at all. If there was a spell that I could do to make my hair as bright as possible, um, I would probably take it too. <laughs> So there are all of my Quidditch teams. I've currently shoved them all on these little base plates so I can sort of put them all on display. And I think they look absolutely fantastic. I really hope that we can get a super cheap and accessible Ravenclaw torso like we did for the Hufflepuff ones. I mean, admittedly, this was still more than I was like hoping to spend on a Quidditch team, but it's a lot better than like 40 bucks a pop. Not to mention the fact that the Ravenclaw ones didn't come with a cape. So hopefully one day I'll be able to have Ravenclaw as well and complete out my entire squad. If that happens, with a minifigure accessory pack. I will be a bit annoyed, to be honest, considering how much money I invested into getting these guys, but I guess I can always just sell the additional figures if I want to and only keep Ravenclaw. <laughs> But thank you guys so much for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel down below, and let me know if you've created an entire Quidditch team, or if you plan on taking any of these ideas as well, or even have ideas for proper characters that I can make inside of the teams, if you guys know the named characters more better than I do, I guess. And until next time, guys, I'll see you later.